Sorry, I lost you there. I ran out of tape. But anyway, just going over it, I'm putting effort, laying at an angle, and you can actually see the swipe. <laughs> Then you just let it come on down and lightly kiss off right where that line is. You can actually see it. You're not using much pressure. All you're doing is breaking the sharp edge. Then you can go up and start to pull it in. This is part two on the exhaust as far as polishing with the fishy grit. I'm trying to give Mr. Kish a little bit of a bargain here. He's been pretty patient and waiting for me. I had a couple of things come up right in the middle of doing three or four pairs of y'all heads and I'm just now getting back on track. So I'm giving everybody a little bit extra of a bonus. Usually I only go to, to 50 grit. On a lot of the exhaust I don't do nothing because it really don't help that much. But um, cosmetically speaking, it sure makes them look good. The only real benefit, as I've told you, is it keeps carbon from building up. No big deal. But anyway, just wanted to show you how I roll that. I go all the way around on the intake and the exhaust, and I break that little bitty edge so it's not so sharp. It's attention to that kind of detail here that really does the trick. Okay, so next up on this is um, I got to get some of the broken coils out of the head with a grinder and then we're going to get ready to CC an intake, a combustion chamber, and an exhaust. We're getting ready to do our final measurements. Now one thing I didn't mention it earlier, I wasn't going to, but I guess I'm in a good mood. I had a change of heart. <laughs> um, I actually did not come up with this idea myself, and it's pretty simple. There's nothing sophisticated about it, but it's little tricks that help you along the way. This is for my old boss, Jerry Goodell of SMS Riverside, California. I worked from him for three years, from 1990 till the end of 92. And uh, during that time, um, he got me going in the right direction. I had come there for the purpose of heads. I operated a dyno and some other things, but uh, a trick that I saw him do, it, I've used for years, and it's absolutely the bomb. Okay, on some of these Chevrolet cylinder heads, especially the 23 degree that has the low port and a tall short turn radius, at the very tippy top, that's almost a 90 degree angle, really. So what's almost impossible, early on I showed you how I went in with the sand roll from this end. Uh, rotated the head around, came from the other end, and rotated it back. You do that back and forth to knock the hump down where you've done the polishing or whatever you're doing. But, it will only get you so far. You'll still feel a ridge at the top. However insignificant, it's still a sharp ridge. So what we want to do is make that an absolute perfect roll. And the method I'm fixing to show you is the only way that I've found to make them absolutely perfect. If any of you guys out there have a better idea, please let me know. Uh, okay, so anyway, what we do is first we start off with this. I'm going to back up and show you the trick. Okay, now... We have to get the head laid down this way where there's overhang where you can get to the port right here. Okay, because what we're going to do is we're going to run a rope through it. This is 40 grit. I have it that goes all the way to 280. The 40 does it, and then you'll see how I finish it up. But you take the paper, you run it through the intake port. Okay. And it'll start to come out right up here. Now look what I've got going on here. Da da! I've got a rope that I can pull, but now here's the trick. In order to position it at the right spot where that ridge is, the way that you lay this up. Now, if, if you're not careful, you can mess things up. We certainly don't want it coming near the seat. Like I said, we certainly don't want it coming up here because if you're 
if you pull this way, it could go off into the seat. And on the bottom right here, if you pull up like that right there, it can booger up the bottom of the port. So there's a balancing act going on here. And what you've got going on is you have to pull this side as far as you can get, which me is my bitch. And then, and, and instead of pulling this way, I've got to pull up. Now that's what that's going to do. It's not going to hurt the seat or the entrance. And as I'm pulling, I bring it back a little bit to me, but not a whole lot because I sure don't want it touching that seat. And this is, you'll have to practice this. It takes quite a while to get to feel for it. But I usually start with the 40, then go to a 120, and so on. But you'll just sit here like this. And what that'll do eventually is it'll take that ridge and roll it in a way that there's no way with a sand roll or even a cross buff that you could get that. Now notice how I'm going from side to side. That's because the short turn is wide and I'm having to go this way to hit that side. Then I bring it right across and go over to this side over here. But that's what you do. It takes practice and you sit there and whittle at it and you can get her to roll. Unbelievable. Wow, it's already gone on that one. So really the 40 grit is all you need, but uh, I've already had to polish areas in there because of the tubes and what have you. I'm going to go ahead and make it even. So the short turn is 120 and the push rod or the tube side of the wall is 120. So anyway, just wanted to go over that. Now the next step, wow, I can just sit here. I wish it was here. I take my finger and you cannot tell where that cast iron seat mounts into that aluminum. It's just that dad blame blended perfect. No hump, no rise. It's like it's one piece. All right, anyway, I take a cross buff, one that's, you know, a little bit used like this one. And then what I'm going to do is go in there and roll over the top. Now you got to be careful because you don't want the metal touching it, but you just do it like this. See, every once in a while I can hear it, that metal will touch it. Then, see, that's bearing down on it. Then you come and you just let it down. Wow, that did it. The combination of the cross buff and this stream paper right here makes the absolute perfect short turn and ladies and gentlemen it don't matter how sharp it is even if it's on a horrible exhaust port that's on the ford heads like the the 460 or the 351 cleveland as messed up as they are you can still get that perfect roll using this method okay that right there is one of my finishing touches i might point out here something else while we're here look at the tube in the head Okay, once again, video only shows it so much. It does <coughs> protrude out just a little bit, but not really that much at all. Yeah, you can feel it with your finger if you roll across it, but it's just a few thousandths. And look at that. Is that just not absolutely beautiful right there? Because that wall, that hump was way out, about 150 thousandths or more. I was able to take that wall and pull it in, pull it all the way in until it actually, that's a head bolt hole, and you got that on both sides. So that right there, look at that straight shot, and it lays right into that seat with just a little bit of radius. It would have been really nice if I could have put 20216 valves, but to do that, you'd have to pull the seats out of the head, put bigger seats. It just, it's just too much trouble. So... It's still going to make a dramatic difference taking that hump and getting that straight wall out like we did. So, anyway, I just wanted to give you a shot of the tube. Let's look at the other side. I'm glad I caught that. Here's some epoxy. I have to take a few minutes and uh, actually, see, it just breaks away when it's on a slick surface. But 
Anyway, there's always that overhang, which I told you I went back in there with a sand roll and lightly touched the seat area to take that sharp edge. See where the gray 45 and then the blue right there is the 60 degree angle and all I did was roll across the edge. But you can see the tube. It's like this on both sides. This is why you put the epoxy on there. There's no water pressure. There's nothing like that. But even though it's press fit, if you don't have the epoxy in there, it's possible for a vacuum leak, however so small, however little bitty, that what it would do between port to port is it would wreak havoc trying to jet the carburetor. It would have a touch of an erratic idle. Not bad, but you will chase that for eternity before you ever figured out that you had a little baby vacuum leak. Well, that epoxy combined with going in under a press fit will never have that problem. These things are just glued to hell in there with uh, epoxy so anyway just wanted to give you a good shot of it and like I said it's just barely you can take your finger it's just barely a protrusion I would have liked not to have taken quite as much out right there I forgot you know when you're in here doing it you lose track of time and space and that's how I set it up for a 202 valve it's got about 15 thousandths more protruding out for than what I wanted for a 194, but <laughs> you're not going to see it. You'll have no wet flow problems. Um, so anyway, that's it. Just wanted to show you that and how I calm the short term. One other thing real quick. I keep wanting to show you so much. Uh, I do come in from the back side with the roll like so and come back about a half inch. And I just can't tell you how much it makes that thing, uh, that uh, sharp, short turn radius blend. But there's another reason I do this. You can see the epoxy on the tube. Okay, that's where I smash it. You can see the gray outline. That's where the epoxy squished out. Now, the trick here is to leave that there. But you go in there with the buff and you go across it. And what it makes is a transition instead of the air coming in and hitting that tube, it's actually got a little bit of an epoxy ramp that just lets it roll right in there. What little bit's protruding has got a ramp. So that's what I wanted to show you. I go in there and hit that and just kind of pull it in. You can feel the before and after. Okay, and it just leaves enough there that it gives it just a little bitty bit of a ramp. So when it comes in, it's got to roll and polishes it too. Plus, it makes it look shiny. If this was a cast iron head, that would really stick out right there. But being bright aluminum, you can't tell much. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that that makes the transition a little bit better. The only po 